So we've got our undercolor. It's all been padded already, right? So um, started off, it been rolled and padded, and now it's just been pressed flat. Okay. Um, I don't pad all of the undercolor, and that's simply because you don't need to, um, because parts of it are just not going to be part of the collar anyway. So if you want me to show you, this is how you mark it. Mark the center line. Okay. And you do that by seeing where the seam is underneath. Then you mark an inch and three eighths up and an inch and a quarter up, okay? You draw that mark either side like that, yeah? And you're, roughly, you're just keeping it parallel with the bottom gap as well for the top, yeah? Measurement like that, that's how I do that mark. And then I do from the inch and a quarter up, collar stand, I mark across. Three and a half, seven. Three and a half is a rough guide for your back neck measurement, and that's why I stopped there. And then I'll just angle this straight up like that, keeping that distance there roughly about the same as that. It's just a rough guide, okay? I'll do the same on the other side. And then I'll put a ruler on the edge, and I mark that like that. So it's, that's roughly about an inch all the way up. And then I mark it there. That's about two inches from the edge there. And the same on this side, okay? And roughly this bit here is all just excess that I don't need to use and I don't need to pad, all right? So I pad this bit going that way, like that up and down when I'm rolling it. And I'll start this one and going back and that forth like that. I stop about three inches away from the edge because this bit here, I end up padding up and down that way. Cause that, so that bit curls that way and this bit curls that way. That bit goes around the neck and this bit is a bit that goes over the shoulder and is hanging down, goes down. The reason why I pad it that way is so that it curls up and it doesn't kink up at the edge of the collar. All right, so once I've done all that, padded it, I press it all flat. Once it's, it's been padded and it's rolled, I press it all flat, get it all done. And then how I mark my uh, brake line, my collar stand, yeah, afterwards, I have to mark it on my actual jacket. So I'll show you that now. So now we're good to go again. I've got my baste and I'm going to put my under collar on and all I need to do, line up the centre seam of the under collar to the centre seam of the back of the jacket, put it on the edge of my tack so I've got that around the back neck, put the edge of the collar there, on the collar there, line it all the way around and all I'm going to do is just mark where that shoulder seam is for the under collar and I'm going to carry it round, just ease it all the way around. Yeah, and what I'm looking for is to mark this part of the under collar where the brake line is on the lapel, okay? So there's two marks, one for the shoulder seam neck point bit and one where the brake line is of the lapel, yeah? I've just literally just eased it around like that and just marked that bit as well, yeah? Okay, so those two measurements, all right? Once you've got those two measurements, what you need to do is then just put a straight line where you put that shoulder seam measurement and a mark there, okay, for the brake line. And then all I'm doing is measuring up from the center seam back an inch and three eighths, okay? I usually do inch and three eighths. The reason why, because usually the collar stand is always an inch and a quarter on standard jackets. Um, overcoats uh, usually, you know, inch and a half. But the reason why I do it inch and three eighths um, rather than inch and a quarter is because I feel like you, you lose a little bit of the collar stand on the roll and when you're pressing it back. So I like to do it just an eighth higher just to compensate for that. And I'll do the neck part, the shoulder bit. I'll just, I would do that inch and a quarter. It's just on the back neck a little bit. And then all I'm gonna do is just join up those three marks there. All right, like that, okay? So once I've got this side marked, yeah? These two sides are cut the same. All I'm gonna do is fold it over, yeah? Line up the edge and pad it through like that. And that way, I've got my mark that I can just join up now because it's more or less there anyway, yeah? And all I'm gonna do is just machine stitch all the way down like that, yeah? You can if you wanna do that by hand. Um, I don't 
do that by I just machine it because it's just a guideline for me to know where to put my crease line. Afterwards, if you want to do a cross stitch on the edge, yeah, to hold it in, you can do that. But for now, just do um, do it as as this is as simple a way as possible. I'm just trying to show you a simple way to uh, mark and press your collar. Okay, so this has been machines pre-machined anyway. So all I need to do now is show you how to press. Now, there's no need to do any mad crazy pressing and stretching. I used to do that when I first started because I didn't really know the reasons why I was doing it. I knew, I mean, I knew it was to um, basically give shape in the collar, but I used to overpress it so much um, that obviously it weakens the, the, fa um, the fiber in the collar. That's the whole point of you stretching it so much so you're able to mold it back. But um, I was I was overpressing it a lot too much when it wasn't necessary and then by the time I went to put on the, the collar on the under collar on the jacket it would just have so it would just be so out of shape um, I wouldn't even know where I wouldn't know where I'm going um, and have a clear guide to how to put it on and how much ease to put on and all that kind of stuff so this is just a simple technique just for people out there that just want to know how to put an under collar without any hassle and the things that you need to look for. So it's press flat. All the things that you need to do on this is literally just pressing around there, yeah? On the top collar. Don't go across the line, just pressing it. And as you're pressing it, you're doing this kind of motion, yeah? It's almost like you're like doing that, yeah? As you're going back, you're pulling it, okay? And then you go over it again and leave the iron there to mold it in place. Keep that heat on there, yeah? And you're not going across this line here, across the um, stand, collar stand line. You're not going across that. So press it that way, turn it around, and now I'm pressing it this way, okay? And you're trying to press it as much as you can. This is the only bit you're trying to stretch as much as you can, okay? While you're pulling it back with your iron, you're pulling it full with this hand, okay? Both hands are working together, and then you leave the iron in it to set it, okay? Now you see how ruffled that's getting like that? That's good because the reason why you don't need to press this because it's, 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 you've done all, all the pressing on this bit and this bit literally now, all you're doing is flicking it back. So you see, it kind of wants to go there anyway, yeah? So there's no need to press this bit. I used to press this a lot and stretch it, but there's, there, there's, no, there's no need for me personally. I mean, if you're being taught that way, then that's fine. Then you just do it the way you've been been shown. I'm only showing you this way because I never had a guide. I never had no one to teach me how to do it um, at all. I just kind of looked at people and then uh, watched how they did it. And some people just really stretched it. And I thought, oh, that's what you've got to do. Just really stretch it. But it was only until I found out later on when someone else showed me a, a real simple way to do it. Then I started to adapt that instead. So what I'm doing now, I'm pressing back this fold here. And you see where that mark, where the shoulder line mark was on the collar? Yeah. From that point there, yeah, then you start to straighten up the collar like that, yeah? And what you want is that bit flicking up like that, that's what you're gonna shrink in, okay? That's all you need to do. All right. So literally stretching it around there as much as I can and then straighten it up, okay? F flip it around and do the same on this side. Stretch it around, okay? When you get to that bit, straighten it up and then shrink it in, okay? So you start to see the shape there. The shape of the collar should look like that, where it's really stretched around there. It's like it's going almost like it wants to go like a circle. Get to the neck point, the where the shoulder seam was, where I marked it, and then you just straighten it out. So that is just straight going out, okay? That's the shape you're looking for, all right? So nothing's been overstretched, it's just, Literally overstretching these points here, um, and that's it. Nothing else is overstretched, and that's that's what you're looking for. Okay. So the next part is so, now we're going to put the under collar on the jacket. Okay. So start off with one side and we're going around. So now I'm going to put the under collar on the jacket. Okay. Got the jacket here. What I'm going to do is start at the center seam at the back. And I need to tack that down and secure it, right? With a nice double cross stitch going on there. So I'm gonna put this on flat, going all the way around, okay? Feeling underneath that everything's lying flat. There's nothing twisted. And just placing it 
where it needs to go right on the edge of the tacks and then double tacking as I'm cross stitching it around okay when I get to this shoulder point here just make sure that you hit the tack okay there's nothing worse than you're trying to get ahead and you look at the tack ahead of that and you're aiming for that aim for that tack there okay and then cross stitch Let's do a double stitch to secure that bit. All right, come around. Yeah, just ease the collar around as you go. And you're only coming over about half an inch past the shoulder seam, yeah? And you stop there, okay? You can leave the pin and needle in there and you're gonna straighten up your collar, getting ready to sew the other part. That's what I'm doing now. I'm putting the edge of the shoulder pad over the collar it's under the collar right okay so the edge of the shoulder pad is there and I'm pulling the back of the under collar straight yeah and I'm lining up this collar stand brake line yeah underneath I'm lining it up to the uh, um, the lapel brake line as well yeah so that all goes in line yeah okay so I'm just pulling it back. So pulling it back is relaxing it actually, yeah? And it's making it run in line with that. Put my finger underneath and I see that it's not tight. I can, even, I can put my finger underneath quite comfortably, yeah? I don't need to put lo any loads of fullness in that bit. It's just relaxed, okay? Because by me pulling this back and pulling it straight, it's actually created a bit of ease at the front there. Because if this was round like that, that would look like it's got a lot of fullness in it, but it's not. It's not fullness. Just straighten it up. It's just put on straight, yeah? With a little bit of ease there. As long as you can do that, then it's fine, all right? So that's all lined up there. All you need to do is chalk mark the edge of where your under collar is. Put about four marks in there, like that, because you're gonna let go now and sew it. So you wanna make sure you sew back where it actually lays nice and I don't want to lose that gauge so that's why I put those marks in there all right so now I'm holding everything underneath I'm going to sew all the way down and I'm going to sew it up to about an inch past the lapel okay just to catch up that underneath all right do another double tack and going past I feel like I'm an inch past that all right, double check, look at any side, yeah. Now what you need to do, yeah, flip it back. You see that's all going in line now with the brake line. Flip this over, yeah. Edge of the pad's just there. Put the collar around like that, yeah, so that's, that will be going around the neck. And this is flat, yeah. And this is the reason why you press your crease on your lapel first and make sure it's pressed and it's lined up to where the buttonhole should be, yeah? Because then when you're putting your under collar on, all you need to do is make sure the under collar lines up with where this is and where it's flat, okay? Because this part here is already pre creased and lined. So once you put this on and you attach it to here, you don't need to mess about with making sure it lines up to where the buttonhole is because this is already pressed in, in position, okay? So it's important to have this pressed already before you put under your under collar it just makes it a whole lot easier otherwise you'll be guessing you'll be putting this on and then you don't know whether it's too tight and then it could be rolling past the buttonhole and all, all kinds of stuff i used to have a, that problem it used to drive me nuts until i realized that all you need to do is just press this first and then that's half the job done all right so now i've got got that done yeah that's all lined up what i want to do is get a ruler i, use, I like to use this metal ruler because it's quite thin because what i need to do is make sure i can align this under collar and then lapel underneath in one one line yeah so i kind of making a sharp crease underneath that's what this is doing i'm just going to run it underneath inside so that basically it gives a sharp edge inside and it makes this run a lot smoother and line up okay so all i'm doing with this ruler is literally just picking it up and just running it inside so it lines up properly okay you don't have to use it, but I just like to use those little things and 
uh, tips. It just helps align the collar, make it run around nicely. So what you're looking at is making sure this bit is flat with there, yeah? Because you don't want it to roll up like that or anything. You just wanna keep that bit flat around here and keep this flat here. And then all I do, I put a pin in it, yeah? That keeps that flat because I'm gonna need to sew that down. So I'm just gonna double check. Yep, yeah, that's all rolling flat. That's all nice and clean around there. Now, the next stage, I just need to attach this bit. So here we go. Just uh, attaching the back. All I need to do is uh, do another cross stitch, going all the way across. I'm going all the way across here, basically, underneath. It's just a securing that stitch together and double tacking it. And I go back on myself as well, just to secure that. All right, and then I cut it. And you can just check to see how it's laying now. So I usually hang it, um, lift it up, and then check to see if it's hanging right. And that generally is, because once that's on, it's going around the neck nicely and down the lapel, and that's running right on the button where it should be, because I was pressed already anyway. But my main thing I'm checking is that the these two bits are aligned with each other and it's going around nicely and this bit here around here is going around nice okay that's what I'm double checking for and it's not going to be tight around this bit here because you've laid it on making sure it's got a knot a give underneath and it's not tight yeah by putting your finger in underneath and making sure it's got a bit of leeway there so this is all clean and no there's no tightness there okay so all you need to do now is secure uh, another stitch. This is just a base, but if you were to do a, a finished job, what you'll um, basically be doing, just pretend this is a, like machine cotton, you'll be doing a, a draw stitch going all the way back, and you'll do that. You could do it in a button cord, a heavier cotton, and you do a draw stitch going all the way back round to about there, yeah? You can do it all the way round the collar if you want, and that draw stitch, if you see what I'm doing like this, what that's doing is it's it's kind of closing up the gap a little bit and shortening the top bit a little bit. It's just it's just drawing it in because what you can I don't know if you can see it, but this still needs to be molded and pressed a little bit on here because it's kicking up a little bit. But if you do a draw stitch inside, it kind of draws it in and it'll keep it nice and flat around the neck, okay? So you can do that with a button cord, a heavier cotton, and you do it at the back. And where you would start it, you see where this bit is here? So I would say about half an inch down from where your lapel um, um, stop underneath, yeah? So you'll start it there, and then and you'll draw it, draw stitch right on that brake line all the way around. You can go, like I say, all the way around to the center, and then do it the same on the other side. Start from that point and go right around to the center, okay? Or you can just do it all the way around and go all the way around till you get to the other side. All in one go, it's up to you. Okay. So once you've done that, all the draw stitch been done, and you put the other side of the collar on, I'm only gonna do one side just to show you, then you will just, Press it with the iron, okay? This would have already been tacked up already. Everything would have been sewed down. You would have done your cross stitch on the edge there, your draw stitch underneath. Everything would have been already done already, okay? It would just be just literally what I've just done, just to press in left. And then what you do after that, you would mark it to mark your under collar and cut your under collar. And I'll show you in the next job. So this is the, the pattern that you're gonna mark out for your top collar, banana collar, all right? You only need the top bit because once you've got the top collar bit, you just use that to make the pattern for your under collar as well, okay? So what you need to do is get your L-shaped ruler, go along the bottom and the top, mark that out, okay? As soon as you've done that, all you do, you measure up, start from this end, two and three quarter, yeah, put a mark there, two and three quarter, and you go up again, another inch and three quarters there, inch and three quarters, okay? That's those two marks. Then you mark along the bottom from there to there, six inches, okay? And then you mark from there to there, inch and three quarters, which is there, 
inch and three quarters. Then from there to there, as you can see, it's a quarter, okay? Just need a quarter. All right, and then up from this measurement here, number six, to there, yeah, is your L square again. Just draw a line, do it the same as well. that bit and the same on that bit yeah once you've got all those lines there then three and a quarter three and a quarter okay that one's up there then you measure up half an inch from there to there okay and then two and a half from there to there okay and then three inches from there to there okay so what you need to do is draw a nice run from there to there okay just make sure it's a nice shape I don't know if you'll have a angled ruler for this but I'll just do it by eye to match that up just so it's got a nice run nice curve and the same here so it's got a nice curve going to there as well okay this bottom one you just do a straight line going straight past that half inch up straight up all right and then from this bit here you go straight up to that point there all right and then you've got to join this bit in okay so it's more like a curve in all right so you see and then all I'm going to do now is cut it out. So, just need to cut it out now. All you do is cut it on that line. It's better to do this in card. I'm just doing it on paper so you can see, but if you've got any card at home, that would be great, because this is a pattern that you'll keep for a long time. So you want to make sure you do it on some paper that will last a long time. You cut it on there like that. All right, so you get all that, cut it all out. Oh, forgot the back bit. Okay, and that's it. Collar is done. So now we're gonna mark and cut your banana collar. So this is the pattern. All I'm gonna do is line it up and mark it around. The cloth is on the double, and that is the crease and fold line. And all I'm gonna do is mark it all the way around, okay, like that. And then you need to allow, I would say about three quarters of an inch all the way around, okay. And about five eighths on the bottom, And make sure that goes like that just make it go to run like that and then all I'm gonna do is put extra two inches on the end and I have extra two inches down there as well okay you're not gonna need all of that anyway it's just extra inlay but just leave it on for now okay so now I'm gonna cut that Next part is cutting the second piece of the collar. Yep. And all you need to do is put it on the edge of the fold again, okay? And then mark on the bottom of the one that you just cut out, okay? Mark across there. You don't need a pattern for this because you just use the one that you cut for a pattern, okay? Once you mark that like that. All right, and then you're gonna add an inch and three quarters all the way around all right and then you're going to cut that off there we go now just cut that all the way around and cut that 
off like that, okay? Now remember, when you're doing the top collar, sorry, you just need to make sure, because it's on a crease, that that crease is in line with the centre back of your jacket. Just make sure the checks match, everything matches, okay? The good thing about when you've got stripes as well, um, they can run off, off the edge of the top collar um, when you're turning it in. It'll all match up nicely, so it, it has a nice run to it. So when you're doing checks, you obviously can't do a two-piece collar because the checks need and the stri um, stripe needs to run on the edge of the top collar. So this only works when you're doing any other fabric, and you can do it on any jacket um, that has a, a top collar and the collar cut like the one we just did as well. So yeah, this this just it just saves so much work and uh, so, so much unnecessary stretching and pulling it just lays on nicely so anyway these are the two pieces that you need and now we're going to get going and machine them together okay but this is what we do open it out and we'll press that out open it out okay we'll press that out and all i do especially the lightweight ones is just press it and just ease it round, yeah? And I'm shrinking it in a little bit, but I'm just placing it round, okay? And the only bit that I'm gonna stretch is just this bit here, okay? Because this bit is more on a straight this bit is on a bias, so it's okay. It doesn't need stretching. It's just this bit here, literally, because it's gonna be hard to move around and get on the collar because it's not it's it's not stretchable. It's it's very straight, so it needs to be released a little bit. All right. Now all you're doing is you're gonna attach these two together, right? So. All I'm going to do is right side to right side, machine this to there, okay? And that's it. So the next bit, it's all been machined now. It's been machined a quarter, going all the way around. So you see how it's starting to come together now, yeah? All right? So the next bit now, we need to open up this seam. So you get your seam presser. I don't have a seam presser. I use the edge of my sleeve board. So if you don't have a seam presser, or a seam board, then uh, just use the edge of your sleeve board. And this helps because I used my steam iron instead of my dry iron this time. I used two different irons depending on what I'm working on. So you just wanna open that seam right up, all the way down, okay? So this technique was shown to me by a very good tailor. His name is John Davis and he works with Tobias Taylors. And uh, he works with his daughter, Roxy. And they've always been doing this collar. I've always known how to do a split banana collar, but not the way that they do it. Because they use a pattern, which goes for all the jackets anyway. And it's just a lot easier. And the system, the way they put it together is a lot easier than what I'm used to and I was so interested in learning how to do it that I'm happy that they showed me that I can uh, show you guys. So anyway, you can see how it's forming together now. Yeah, that's laying, that would lay really flat on top of the collar. And this bit, literally you can see how it'll just kick in and go inside the under collar, all right? So let's get the under jacket. So here we have it. We've got our under collar. It's all been cut away and all prepped up. I've had to do this under collar on a pocket base. So usually you would have your facing on there and that would all be completed and all done, but I don't have a jacket um, for you to be able to you know, do the collar on there um, properly. So I had to use this dummy one. So don't worry about that. All we're concentrating on is the collar anyway. Yeah. So I've already cut it and shaped it. Yeah. So everything's done. So all I'm doing now is just laying this top collar on. Yeah. And I want to lay it on and have the seam coming inside 
about three eighths, yeah? Good seam, all right? So, just lay it on like that, lay it around, and you can see how flat and nice that's already lying on there, yeah? Without any stretching or anything. So, let's start stitching. Right, start at the center back, okay? Like I said, making sure that can go in a good three eighths, okay? Now I'm sewing it close to the edge. When I mean close to the edge, I mean close to the, about half an inch away from the edge, the under, under collar, right? All the way through, okay? And while you're going around, just making sure you're checking that that seam is gonna be going inside, okay? Just double check that as you go around, all right? So when I come to the end, I don't put fullness in there, I just ease it on a little bit more, okay? So I'm coming near to the tip of the collar, just to make sure it's not tight on there and it's not, you just lay it, just a little bit of fullness, just a little bit, not much, okay? And then I mirror that, coming back, making sure it's kept in there, okay? And I'll stitch it back, and I'm stitching it closer to the edge now, all right? Stitching it all the way back, and I'm going to the center, okay? And then I'm gonna stop again, and then carry on the other side, all right? Okay, now I come to stitching the other side, I'm only really gonna stitch half of this collar so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do a bit of this bit as well, going around. So, always start in the middle and I go off that way, yeah? And then this side now, I'm starting this way, going on the top. Making sure that's going in. And like I say, if you've got stripes, wherever you ended the stripe there, to try and line it up to end off on there, yeah, at the edge of the car. Try and match it up with the other side as well, okay? So, come around, coming around here. Try putting a little bit of fullness in, all right? I bring it back around. Got a little bit, just a little bit, not much. You don't even need hide any in there anyway, because it's such a lightweight job, you don't want it to show in there. That's the whole point of doing this collar, so you don't need to put really any fullness in there. But I like to just put a li little bit, just so that it's got a little bit of give in there, all right? Now the next stitch I'm gonna do is all the way through the back, okay? So what I'm doing, lifting it up, and I'm gonna stitch like a quarter down from where that collar stand line is, stitch line is, yeah, a quarter back down. And I'm going all the way through, okay? Trying to keep everything flat out of the way. I'm going all the way through. Making sure you haven't, you know, caught any lining or anything, okay? Stitch that all the way through, all the way down, okay? So you come right to the other end. Double tack. I flip it over. You can see more of what's going on. Okay. You still see it starting to form there. Okay. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is making sure I can cut off all this extra inlay. And what I'm gonna do is cut it back. Okay. What you can do is mark it first. So you see where your line is so basically this is where your cloth facing will, will come up to that you, you turn in and that will be on the edge there okay that will come all the way around here and all the way around like that that's where your facing will come around there so just imagine your facing is there so I'm just marking or some under underneath to the edge of where the facing would be yeah mark it all the way around and then where my, I can feel my shoulder seam, I mark there where my shoulder seam is. So I'm gonna cut into there like that, okay? So I'm cutting to it like that. 
okay? And I'll leave about a good seam all the way on there, okay? Cut around like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the scissors there, right at that point where the under collar connects with the lapel. Put it right there. I'm gonna cut into it, okay? And then I'm gonna cut off, I say about a good seam extra. And this is where you're gonna tuck it in, yeah? And now you would usually put on your top collar. Okay, so I'm just gonna start to lay it down and see how it's looking before I stitch it. It's looking all right so far, so good. So now, I stitch that down right in that corner bit first, secure it, and then I start to go all the way along that lapel line, making sure that's straight and it meets up to where the facing would usually be, okay? You come around, flip it over, do exactly what you do with a normal colour, move it around like that, and then you stitch it. Flipping it in. Make sure you get a nice around curve on there, okay? Now the only part of the seam you're gonna see, yeah? And then when I double tack there, I carry on stitching all the way inside, all the way through, okay? Just to hold the rest of this down, okay? But the only part of the seam you're gonna see is this bit, yeah? Because the lining is gonna come up to this, this line anyway, yeah? The seam line, it's gonna come just over that. So you're not gonna see none of that, okay? So you flip it around and you can see how it's coming together now, all right? What I need to do now is flip it over and cut down, I've already cut, this back a little bit, okay? Now I need to cut back all of this. I'm only doing one side of the collar and the other side of the collar you do exactly the same, okay? So give you an idea, once you've done all that bit there, yeah, and you've done this side down there, you just cut this back the same as that so they're all equal and it's all sewn all the way around, beating up to the other side. And then basically I'll cut this all in one. Okay, but I'm just gonna do one half just to show you. So I cut this down, okay? You can even cut it down a little bit more. Leave about three eighths on there, cut it down. And then turn it in, all right? So what I've already done, I've cut this back a little bit just on this side. And then you cut a little bit of the back seam off so it's not so bulky. You cut just a, a, like an arrow. Yeah, just a little bit of the ends off. You flick in the top color inside there and you secure that with a double stitch. Kind of multitasking with my needle and flicking it in with the cloth to make sure that's in and then I stitch, yeah? So, kind of easing the cloth in with the needle to make sure it's secure with the edge of this, okay? Just aiding it in. And while I'm moving it around, I'm kind of moving this at the back and moving it around, just so that I'm not pulling it, but it allows me to get this in a lot easier because it's not ruffled up and it's just a straighter, flat line just to ease in, yeah? So just carry on doing that all the way around. And and doing it around here. Just keep going around. And you can kind of feel what's going on underneath as well. It's not twisting, so everything's good. And stitch it, coming towards the end. And then double stitch. And that's it. Turn it over. Yeah. And you see how that's starting to look now, right? So all I need to do is turn this back, chop this down a little bit, and I'm gonna press it actually before I turn it in, just so I know where I'm going with it. Just 
give it a little press. Okay. And you can even cut off a little bit as well, off the end. You don't need too much. And then when I'm folding this back, yeah, what I, I tend to do, to stitch it down, because you don't want to pull it or anything like that to curl it in, you just want to make sure this lays as flat as possible. So I like to just stitch just the edge bit first. There, yeah? I'll stitch just the edge before I go to the back. All right, I'll just do a little cross stitch. Just so I know that's laying as flat as it needs to be without any pulling or anything, all right? And then that's done. And then obviously I'll do the same on the other side. And then when I've done both of those sides, um, you can press it if you want, give it a light press, just put it on, a, on the edge of your, your ham, like that. So now that's all been done and laying flat now, you just, if you want to just give it a, a quick press, just to sharpen up the edges that you've basted back and just make it look all clean. It doesn't really need to be pressed, to be honest, because you haven't got no fullness or anything in it. It's only a little bit you have in there, just to ease it over. When you're going over the shoulder and it's coming over the chest, just to make sure it's got that giving it already that you've put underneath there anyway. So just to give it that extra give on top as well, we just put a little bit of ease in there, not even much, not, not a lot, you won't even notice it. So anyway, just um, give it a nice little light press. You can even use your steam iron or dub it with your, your, uh, your wet dubber, just to give it a bit of a, a sharp crease and mold it all in place, everything that you've um, put in. So that's it. And now you can see inside that will just go around so you can see inside that will just go around nicely on the inside whereas this cloth is really light it's like eight ounces right and you wouldn't really this is not really one of those weave cloth that you can stretch that easily so there's no way i'll be able to get this inside if it was a one-piece collar so that's why doing it in two pieces this side just it kicks in because it's on the bias and it just lays out flatter so that you get that nice run and you don't get a rigid edge it's just smooth and now you can see this is it so obviously I had to do it in dummy cloth but you can see where the shape of the top collar would be this would be the face and obviously and you can see how smooth it lies on the jacket with no ripples of trying to stretch it for it to get on the collar it lays down smooth it's not tight there's no mad crazy fullness in there there's nothing that is gonna that's not going to move that's just going to stay nice and clean yeah there's going to be no problems with that